So welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to be telling you exactly how you can upload, uh, download, and delete images from Parse. And really, you could do this for any file, but I'm doing this for an image. Now, uh, as you can see over here, if I just go over to my Chrome, and if I go into Imgur, uh, which is a uh, photo sharing site. As you can see, I have hosted a picture of me at Ripley's Aquarium, actually. Uh, I was there just, I think, last month, um, and there might may be a video about it soon. Uh, but I didn't mean to say that. Anyway, okay, let's continue. Uh, as you can see, I've put a little picture of me from there. Uh, I've hosted it on Imgur. And now I'm going to be uploading this to Parse using code. Uh, we're going to download it, put it into an image view, uh, and then delete it off of Parse. So let's get started. First of all, let's go into Parse, uh, because that's pretty much where we're going to be doing this. Um, so, Parse.com. Okay, so let's go to our apps. Uh, and let's just go to our core of our image upload. I just created a quick uh, database called image upload uh, and under it in its core I've created a class called photo uh, which has the image name as string and image file as file per uh, actually columns and now we're going to be adding some rows to it with some files. So let's begin. Uh, so first of all let's explain the functionality of the app. Basically what happens, let's just run this on the simulator What's going to happen uh, is it just shows a blank screen for a while, uh, and then once it's uploaded the image to parse, you can click on load image. Uh, it shows you the title of the image in a message box, uh, and then it shows you the actual image itself. And again, this is from parse, so I'll prove it to you in just a second. But let's just close that down, uh, and now let me explain exactly how it works. And on the same, at the same time, I'm going to be showing you what's happening in parse. So what's happening? is on view did load we're calling a function called upload image. Now essentially what upload image is doing uh, is first of all we're defining a constant called URL. This is the URL for our Imgur image. Then we're defining a constant called data which is equal to the NS data which is equal to the contents of the URL uh, w NS URL, which is taken from a string, which is our URL. Then we're forcing that to be unwrapped, uh, and then forcing the NS data to be unwrapped. Because we know in this case that it will be correct, uh, or there will be something in it. Uh, then we're declaring a constant uh, uh, called image file of type PF file, which is going to be equal to a new PF file, and we're running the name data initializer on it. So we're giving it the name, tanmayripleys.jpg, and we're giving it the data, the data that we just extracted from the URL. Then we're just doing a force try image file dot save. And so now what's happening is we're saving this image file locally. Now what we're doing is we're creating a PF object called user photo uh, and basically its class name is called photo because if I show you over here I created this class called photo. Okay, now we're setting user photo's image name to me at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. Then we're setting the image file to the image file that we just created, the PF file constant. And then we're doing a force try user photo dot save. And so now what we're doing is we're saving the user photo, the entire thing, online properly. Okay, so now let's run the app. And as you can see, you now know what's happening in the background. We have now successfully uploaded the image uh, now because this button has appeared. Okay, so now what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go to parse and if I refresh, as you can see, we can see image name, me at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada, uh, and the image file is Tanme Ripley's, uh, and then I can download that, of course, uh, and look at it. Okay, perfect. Uh, and now what's going to happen is let's just take a look at the IB action for the button clicked. Now this IB action, IB action calls download image and delete image. And essentially what happens, download image will download the image as it says and put it into the image view. Uh, and delete image will uh, actually just delete the image off of parts. Uh, and so, uh, I can just get, show you a sample of that. It does this. Uh, yeah, replace Aquarium of Canada. Perfect. Okay, so now continuing. What's going to happen is in download image, we are creating a new PF query uh, for the class name photo. Then we are creating an object, which is the first object we get from that query. Then we're creating a UI alert controller uh, with the title, title of image, 
a message as the image name itself that we got from Parse, and we're giving this the alert style. Then we're giving it, uh, then we're creating actually a UI alert action uh, with the title nice uh, of style cancel, uh, and it has no handler, and then we're adding this uh, to our UI alert controller. Then we're presenting this UI alert controller uh, on our screen, uh, doing using self.presentViewController, and then the controller makes sure it's animated and no completion handler. Then what we're doing is we're running the uh, we're actually creating the variable for the image, which is equal to just a new generic UI image. I guess I could also just do uh, UI image. That works much better. It takes a bit less memory. It doesn't really matter though. Anyway, continuing. Uh, then we're just saying uh, we're creating a new constant called file, which is equal to uh, object dot object for key image file as a new PF file. Uh, and so now what we're doing is we're taking the PF file that we uh, sent over to parse. We're taking it back and we're extracting it into a PF file. Uh, then what we're doing uh, is we're saying image is equal to UI image, which is itself from data which is itself from a URL, which is itself from a string, and then we just get the files URL from parse, we force unwrap that, then we force unwrap the NS URL, then we force unwrap the NS data, then we force unwrap the UI image. That worked. Okay, looks complicated, but once you just revise over it a few times, it isn't, I promise. Anyway, then we're setting the image views image to the image that we just got. And in case you were wondering, the image view IV outlet is up over here. And then, as you can see, we have the function delete image, which is called next after download image, uh, which essentially just creates a new PF query uh, of class name photo. Uh, we get the first object from that uh, query, and then we uh, force try to delete that object. And that is as simple as that. Now, as you can see, if I run this app one more time, let's go to parse, let's refresh. As you can see right now, there's nothing in photo. But once our app is done loading, as you can see, if I refresh, as uh, it, you can see that there is something in photo. Okay, now let's just click on load image. As you can see, me at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada is the exact title we gave it over here. Me at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. Okay, now let's click on the nice button so it continues. Uh, it shows me the image that we just downloaded from Parse. And now if we uh, refresh and parse, it's gone because we have deleted it. And that was it for this tutorial. Now in the next tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to do this with a much more elegant UI. This was just a bare bones proof of concept uh, because I just wanted to get this uh, out uh, ASAP. Uh, and so next, I'm going to be putting a UI to it so you can actually select images and take images uh, to upload and then see them in a list. Uh, then later, I'm also going to be integrating this into my chat app uh, and as I long promised, I'm also going to be integrating push notifications and better private chat uh, into my chatting app. Uh, and so uh, all, all of those will be in separate parts and we're going to merge them together. Uh, okay, so that's it for this tutorial uh, and explanation for its next parts. Uh, okay, so if you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like. Uh, you can also comment down below if you have any questions, suggestions, app ideas, really anything. You can also email me if you have any of those. Uh, and you can also email me uh, if you have a video question that you'd like me to feature in one of my next videos. Uh, you can also contact me via Twitter, at Tajimani. Again, all my points of contact will be in the description. The source code will also be in the description on a GitHub repo. Uh, and yeah, if you like my content, you want to see more of it uh, on YouTube specifically, you might want to consider subscribing to me. It does help out quite a bit. Uh, and that's going to be it for this tutorial. Goodbye.